Hi, everyone. For many of us, good or bad, our parents were our first template of love. I grew up living a unique yet commonly shared experience, that of the child of first-generation immigrants. My parents emigrated from Vietnam in their 20s, looking for opportunities that they were never afforded growing up in an impoverished country. Like many, they left behind friends and family, career ambitions, and an entire life behind them to come to the US and work entry-level jobs for decades to support our family. Growing up, I was probably overly aware of the sacrifices that my parents had made for me and my brother. My mom's absences from our weekends and sporting events were notable, but I knew that she was working so that I could shoot some basketballs and practice gymnastics. Poorly, I might add. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but over time, this was being ingrained into my own concept of love. Love was giving. Love was making sure that other people's needs were met before your own. Love was coming home from a long day of work and using the little bit of energy that you had left to peel and cut up a piece of fruit for your child to snack on while they did their homework. Love was sacrifice. I found myself emulating this idea of love in my own friendships and relationships, sacrificing parts of myself for other people. I said yes to things that I didn't have time for. I took on other people's problems as my own. I didn't speak up when things bothered me out of potentially upsetting someone else. I became a people pleaser. <laughs> You can imagine my disappointment when I found myself in relationships where other people weren't willing to drop everything that they were doing just to make me happy. I thought that love was impossible to find, that nobody cared. Turns out, other people just have healthy boundaries. <laughs> this became especially apparent when I started a new chapter in my life, medical school in the midst of a pandemic, no less. As many of you may know, medical school is hard. <laughs> I found myself with less time, less emotional space, and less mental capacity to give. But don't worry, I still tried. I tried to give and to love and to sacrifice, but instead, I found myself feeling drained and exhausted. Sacrifice was all I had ever known, and if I didn't have the energy to give, I found myself feeling like, like I didn't know who I was anymore. Technically, I found myself in my first therapy appointment. <laughs> Amongst the number of profound pieces of advice that my therapist shared with me, she also shared a unique perspective of identity. That who we are is not defined by what we give to other people. Rather, our identity is defined by our values and how we choose to live in accordance with those values. I didn't value sacrifice, at least not meaningless sacrifice. I valued what that sacrifice stood for, love and connection. I thought about it. I also valued kindness and empathy, gratitude, resiliency, ambition, family. These are the values that defined me, not sacrifice. I added one more value to that list, self-preservation. Ironically, it meant doing exactly what other people were already doing, setting boundaries. <laughs> that meant giving without giving up things that were important. That meant empathizing with people's problems without having to try and solve them. That meant 
being able to say no without carrying the guilt of potentially disappointing someone. And doing these things gave me the space to preserve and love myself first. As I learned more about myself and how I showed up in my own life, my interpersonal relationship started to change. I was no longer responsible for anyone else's happiness other than my own. And nobody else was responsible for my happiness. And as my relationships changed, so did my idea of love. Love shifted from this idea of obligation to choice. Love was not having to give up parts of ourselves for other people. Love was choosing people to share the best parts of ourselves with. Love was choosing to show up as our true selves every day and to surround ourselves with people with similar values. Sacrifice could be love. But love didn't have to be sacrifice. Love could be choosing to prioritize ourselves first so that we can be better friends and partners to others. Love could be choosing to communicate when our needs aren't being met so that other people have the opportunity to listen and to strengthen that bond. Love could be the little things like writing a letter to someone you miss, telling them you're thinking about them, or coming home from the grocery store with someone's favorite snack because seeing it reminded you of them. Love could be peeling and cutting up, peeling and cutting up a piece of fruit for someone to snack on, even if you didn't just come home from a long day of work. Now, don't get me wrong, I have literally no doubt that my parents love me to no end. They would give up anything, and honestly have, to make sure that I have everything that I need in this life. My mom gave up on her dream of becoming a doctor so that now I have the opportunity to be in medical school. How full circle is that? I think my parents' sacrifice was their most noble act of love. They took on an impossible task of a lifetime, but it was just that, a task of a lifetime. I have had the privilege of living a very different life than they have, so it makes sense that how we give and receive love looks so different. But we don't have to mirror their style of love for it to be just as meaningful or passionate or impactful. Granted, I'm still learning, learning about myself, my values, my boundaries, and what love looks like for me. And I hope each of you will walk out of here thinking of how you choose to love aligns with your values. Because love doesn't have to be what our parents had, or necessarily even what we received growing up. Love is a reflection of who we are today in this moment. And as we inevitably change and evolve as people, so will our idea of love. Thank you.